than welcome to sit in this and do whatever. Right, you should now see in your screen. Paul is recording. Paul is recording. So no talking about lingerie, sexual habits or anything like that. That's for afterwards. Um, OK, so um, you've never probably seen or heard of what we do in these, but I hold my hands up and then I do complex maths on one hand. No, I don't. Um, let's, just <laughs> let's just go, shall we? And in five. Hello everybody and welcome to another E5 podcast. I'm your host Paul Meenan. Thank you very much for tuning in and today I have my brother from another mother. Please introduce yourself. Hello mate, it's me David, Sparky Ninja. And we have a, a special guest, uh, a co-host from another media platform. Introduce yourself. The dark side, Thomas Nargi. Yeah. Thomas <laughs> Nargi, Tom the Spark, or Mr. Tom Nargi of Fix Radio. Yes, we a, indeed. We have a DJ, um, DJ. with us. Good and tune, by a, the way. We have, yeah, your music, the music on Fix Radio is very good, by the way. We're not sponsored by them, but it's... Um, it's really good. And I, I have had the privilege now. I've been on your show once in the studio and twice on phone in. So it's it's a really, it's really good nice jiggle so far. It's all right. <laughs> yeah. It has done. And and for those who I'm going to probably get hated by lots of people saying this, for those who may not know Tom in the industry, which is probably lots of people, given the volume of electricians in this country. Um, Tom, you are a just a normal spark who many years ago decided to document your adventures. Yeah, I foolish. One day I decided it. I don't know. I just foolishly decided it would be a good idea to to document it as I go. And I don't know. Was that two year, two and a half years ago? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, I think it's fair to say. Um, it, I mean, they are basic. I've always looked at them as like a a thought piece diary rather than a how to guide. And there's... yeah, that's more. It's more of a just a, a con. It's a flow of consciousness, really, when it happens. Mm -hmm. If that makes I, sense. Yeah. I think, I mean, obviously, I've been putting up content for a couple of years. I've, ta I've taken a bit of time off just for my own sanity because um, I do technical nonsense waffle, uh, as some guys may describe it. Um, but I think for the, a lot of people trying to enter the industry, some of the, something that can't really be shown to them is what it's like out there. So a lot of these guys just taking the camera out, you know, starting your video seven o'clock in the bloody frosty morning at the BP station eating your bacon roll. Yeah, I can't show yeah. that on a whiteboard, can I? So, you know, that's great. I mean, that, and, you know, just, you know, you talk about London with parking and stuff. So, it's you know, I think it's great. And I think you've got a huge amount of people appreciating you for just exposing that part of the industry to them. Because you're probably one of the first that started doing that. I mean, a lot of people are doing this now, but you're probably one of the first people that kind of took the camera out into the streets, into the van. Um yeah, it's, it's weird because when I started it, I, it was literally when I moved here and I started it. And I was Googling, I was looking on YouTube and there was nobody doing this. And I was like, I didn't when I started it, I, I wasn't thinking like this was going to turn into anything. But it shows I did it for I was uploading every Monday for it was eight months solidly. And in eight months, I got three hundred and thirty subscribers. So eight months of constantly uploading and I got three hundred and thirty subscribers. And then. It was just a Saturday morning, just one day, just one morning. It just took off. Um, but it goes to show, like, when people start it now, how quickly you can build subs because you've sort of started a, do you know what I mean? There's a, when other people oh, start doing it, yeah, it builds I mean, a platform of, of it, creators. Yeah. And, it, and fundamentally, you know, you, you're bringing people to YouTube to watch that content. And so, you know, an audience is being funneled to that platform. To yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. so if new people come on, the other YouTubers have already brought that wider demographic into the, yeah, into, yeah, the yeah. into the media. So am I the only one who still doesn't really... I know Dan will have a go at me for not saying this. Please subscribe. Um, <laughs> but I, I genuinely don't do any of this for the subscriptions. I Don't get me wrong, I appreciate them. Um, but because obviously I don't, we don't monetize this channel. It, it's never, I, I don't sit and fester and go, oh, how many do, you know, have we got 4,000 followers? Do I need to do a giveaway? I, I don't understand that people can do all the giveaways to be honest with you, because I am skin all the time. <laughs> I, am well, I, I, I think, I think there's a lot of kind of um, to and fro with manufacturers with the giveaways. Oh, really? See, I I'm, expect, I, yeah. I'm too embarrassed to ask the manufacturers for anything. I genuinely yeah, too, way too embarrassed to ask them for anything. I wouldn't want to take anything off of them because you owe them something. Well, they do approach as well. Oh well, they don't approach me. Well, you can be yeah. Okay. They do. They do approach. Um, 
Uh, Maybe it's I've, I'm... I've had a number approach me. I've I've accepted a couple of things from Chauvinar New because I didn't have a multimeter and a power supply to create content. Mm -hmm. I said, well, I'll, t I'll accept that because it means I can then create more content. Mm -hmm. But if you were to send me a thing to then give a review on, um, I, 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 I decided there was enough people doing that or trying to get there. I decided that I wasn't, you know, that wasn't really for me. Yeah, I think the market is slightly saturated, but everyone, I think, does their own little quirky differences with all the content creators. Um, but we're not really going to talk about other content creators because we're talking about Tom. So, Tom, you have a YouTube channel. Um, it's fair to say <laughs> you're so. many, many grey hairs have appeared since then. Yeah, get in the freaking queue, dude. Get <laughs> in the queue, right? Yeah. And I've just shaved some of the snow off this mountain tonight. Thank you very much. So, some of the beard is actually missing. So, I'm looking more beautiful and younger. Um, so you you have an Instagram account, which you're uh, is that a new thing mm. for you and Twitter because I believe you've expanded a bit. I, I try I've got all of them I've got Instagram and Twitter but I try to I tend to stay off Twitter because I just find it incredibly toxic it's um, so toxic it's mind-blowing yeah and Instagram I find is actually a lot lighter it's not really as there's not as much sort of sniping mm. or bitching or anything well, it's much much lighter so we've yeah. done Instagram live together haven't we and um, apparently a lot of your Instagram live followers so let's just clear this up now um, I am referred to as the old bloke or your dad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I go to McDonald's with Tom for lunch and I'm then referred to as his dad or the yeah, old bloke. Yeah, you're going to go to McDonald's once and that's it. Suddenly we're, we're related, yeah. <laughs> we are related now somehow. Um, I don't know. I, maybe he's just stealing all my hair dye. Maybe that's that's a thing. Um, but yeah, yeah, so and recently, recently, because we, for those who are listening or maybe watching this on um, YouTube, um, You've recently obviously moved. We did a conversation couch. So we're not going to talk about your background, um, but you are now on Fix Radio. So tell us why. What, what was the background behind it? What, what do you do it for? What motivates you? Because it's um, there is uh, Fix was one of those things. It's uh, the producer who was there, Graham Mack. Uh, he's actually just left, but the producer who was there, Graham Mack, he approached me and just said, "Do you want to do an afternoon show?" And I was like, "Yeah, okay, fine." Um, I didn't really think much of it at the time and mm. and yeah long story short i went and did a i did like a, a promo um, airing there and a couple of weeks passed and he said all right you've got the slot and that was basically it and there wasn't really much of a there wasn't really much of a script to it it was just you basically turn up and you do you've got one hour and within the hour you've got six uh, slots you've got to fill and within those six slots you can just talk about uh, whatever you want to talk about as long as it's got mm. some sort of electrical resemblance that's pretty much all it is i listened on um i listened on friday i mean i, I listen but i listened on friday and you were talking about eicrs and there's this gentleman was it barry or someone from white from wales yeah yeah, yeah. And, oh, you got yeah in, and he says i do i do these and you and you, you came up with a correct question how many do you do and he just went one, <laughs> one. yeah so this is what i'm saying you know, you get people who are going out and they're, I mean, I spoke to somebody who's doing like as some poor song. He's got like five a day to do. And I'm just like, he's not doing I, five a day, I can't so. work it. I honestly just don't, you know, you look at this industry and it's just, it's such a, a broken, corrupt system. And when you've got like these national companies giving some poor sod in his van five a day to do, well, I mean, what's, I don't know what people expect. I don't it's, get it. it just... It's the visually impaired and the partially sighted because the visually impaired are the people who are actually saying, yeah, go out and do five. Mm -hmm. And the partially sighted are evidently the QSs or whoever is taking these reports in and going, there's value in this. No, there fucking isn't. There's no, there's no you know, value in it. The, the, the funny Ridiculous. thing is, whenever, whenever I go to a client and they've had one of these organisations come and do their documentation, I just sit and I just, it's, it's unfortunately, it's a case of, right, count the mistakes. You can't just go. You can't. You, you can't <laughs> yeah. just open it up to look for the quality. It's like, oh, it's them. Okay, let's find them. There's one. There's one. There's one. There's one. And it's so frustrating. And the client doesn't know. And I say to the client, you know, do you have anyone who's competent enough to read this information? Well, no. That's why do we hired them. This <laughs> I've never. I've never told this story. But the first time I ever experienced a um, EICR, it was when it was called a periodic. Yep. And I was living with the mother-in-law. Still getting over it. Um. I was living with a mother-in-law, and she had an electrician come around. We've all been I, there, mate. We've all had to I, do that. Bit. Exactly. Well, I start. I just started college, and um, she had someone come around to, um, I think it was, add an extra socket and do testing on her wiring. 
And this bloke had all these fancy gizmos. And I remember I was talking to him because I was learning. He was literally in the house for nearly 12 hours. He opened every socket, every switch, every single light. And he found so many faults. And he wouldn't write up that certificate until he'd done every bit of it bang on. That man earned his money that day. What year was this? Really did. Um, 1990. Um, <clears throat> so pre-part yeah, piece. Nice. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, yeah, 1997, I think, 98, yeah. something like that. Pre-perdosed. Yeah, it was a while ago. <clears throat> it was a while ago. Yeah. But, yeah, pre-Part P. Um, and he earned his money, and I had a lot of respect for him, to be honest with you, because when I first started learning about testing in college, it was like, it takes ages. And I remember there were guys in my class who used to say, oh, I'm doing testing on commercial. Great. Um, how many circuits are you doing? And one guy, I remember, he said to me, oh, I've done two in an entire day. I did, I did testing with my old man. Just a few mm-hmm. weeks ago, I did. I put a little video up of one of our observations for a C2 because it's a common guidance of a C3. Uh, and in that, a yeah. yeah, in yeah. a day, I tested seven circuits. And I, I got home. I got to the. Old, I was staying with the old man, and and his his wife said, "How did it go today?" I said, "Well, if I worked for anyone else, he'd have fired me today." <laughs> what you, you know mean? what? It's, I've only it, tested seven circuits. It's true, but the thing is, when you test them circuits, at least you can verify and validate the the validity. Oh, I had four, and the I had, I had four pages. Of, I had four pages of observations that they had never seen or heard of before. And that that is one of the problems with the ICRs is the people that are doing them are producing more and more. Um, pages of observations and codes and it's i think it's getting on the nerves of the clients and so now clients in recent years have got savvy and are saying i want the pass well let's remember if you give me a pass this this is the problem with periodics the periodics came in we obviously oversaturated oversubscribed the authorized persons doing periodics or we we, we fucked it up somehow so they changed the terminology to the electrical installation condition report to somehow advise the client to relate to the document as more of a not a tick box process same time next year but a oh this is actually something that states the condition to try to in some way now conceive that the client will understand the importance of this document better and but we're still yeah. we're still doing 10 of them a t- you know about eight or so a day and yeah, I've I've no. seen reports where um, you open up the certificate and you go, oh okay, um, and then it says, please see additional um, pages, and then you have this novel attached to the back of it of codes, and you go, great, I've got four hundred C threes, and yet I've still got a satisfactory. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you get? And then you, I, I've literally before this is years ago, um, not in my current job, but I've literally gone to contracts going, Why have you given me all C threes? And they've turned around and gone, oh, well, the guy before you didn't ever want to see a C1 or C2. And I'm like, oh, what? Wow. What are you doing? Seriously? Because I'll read it straight away and I'll go, see that, um, that, you know, exposed buzz bar, C3. Uh, it, without seeing it, I'm, I'm thinking C1 straight away or at least C2 here. Come on. Exposed, exposed to whom? Exposed to uh, um, non-skilled persons. Right. Yeah, so it, it how's was, that not yeah, a C1? Was, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. But you hear, we in, in our dealings with E5, what we, we've got a quite a big network of friends uh, and colleagues and peers, and we hear more and more now of, of large contracts being procured, especially like in the rented sector, not private social housing, where estate agents who manage portfolios will just go, ah, Tom, here's um, 350 EICRs that you can do over X amount of years. Mm. It's a lot of money in for you. By the way, we don't want unsatisfactory, okay? Mm. And then, and then, and then uh, there will be contracts that will go. Well, if I only do 10%, then I'm only making it satisfactory on the 10%. So I do the nearest socket and the one lighting circuit. Yeah, That's yeah, low yeah. risk. Um, mm. And if I don't include the bonding, I could probably issue a satisfactory, and I'm perfectly legal to do that. And and that's one of the reasons why they become, uh, as we know, we're in the coronavirus period where at the moment there's no toilet paper. Um, I've many people, many sparks have said use a copy of seven six seven one or an EICR. There's lots toilet of toilet paper, paper in folders <laughs> filled with EICRs right in now. In many a client desk, yeah, and and it's because I think um, the the commercial pressures of the race to the bottom on it. To honest with you, and you've discussed this many times. You've tried to figure out that single solution to this and and i loved because i thought barry was paul skirm's next door neighbor i thought paul was shouting for the ball. <laughs> no you can't do it more than one a day <laughs> I, I genuinely genuinely if i ever had a spark say to me i can do four else's in a day i would sack him in a me- immediately for his arrogance because i'm sorry i know people watching this or hearing it will go oh how dare you that's disgraceful yeah. i'm sorry 
bullshit. Standard and, house nowadays, yeah. seven or eight circuits, doing four of them in a day. Even if they're empty voids, you will struggle mm. to do a quality full set of tests and results. And, and for those of you listening that are employed to do four, five, six a day, we get it. We get the point. We get that you've got to earn a living. We understand. Yeah, we do. And we want to help the industry improve. And yeah. we get it. We get it. We know. We know that it's got to be done. And we know that you do, obviously. No, just just right. make sure it doesn't adjust, you know, the, the biggest, the bigger, the bigger um, question here. Make sure just you because do you're understand employed, what you can't do. In fairness, just because your employers want to set low standards doesn't yeah. mean you have to meet them. Yeah. It's, it's yeah a challenge. I remember well, I, covered, I covered for a mate. A mate of mine was um, not well. And so I covered for him some work at, um, around North Yorkshire, and he had some contracts. He was he was a some contractor for a company about eight miles down the road, which were the NIC approved contractor. But they some contracted to another contractor, which was another NIC approved contractor, which then so, that had the contract with the local authority. But this guy that's now three lines down the chain, he had to wear the shirt and livery of the primary contractor. So he had he, wore, he, he drove a white van, so there was no no branding on the van, and he was given a shirt of the company that was the first company in line of the contract, and the qualified supervisor of that company would sign off the work, not even knowing that the, the, the oh, not anything about that guy who's doing the work. And he asked me to do it, and I said, okay, so what's the deal? He says, oh, it's four pound a circuit, <laughs> right? So you go, I go, I go to a swim pool, I go to a school, I go to a library. It's all local authority kind of work. I open up a fuse, but I'm like, right, I see 27 circuits, 27 times four. I now know, I know, I now know my money. If I now mm. know my money, should I stay here three days, two days, or should I finish by lunch? Mm. Yeah, it's true. It's very and, true. And that's it. That's the problem. So I can then drive to actually fill the quantities, and then we've got certificate software that auto fills and all that. Bollocks. Yeah, absolutely. Um, price per circuit model, it's too corruptible. Um, and, you know, it's the same with power testing. It's I would say it's corrupted. I don't think it's corruptible. I think it's corrupt way of working, to be honest. That's, again, that's just my opinion. Feel free to sue me, anyone listening. Um, yeah, it's that's, yeah, do you know, it's a valid point. Um, Tom, you're probably wondering um, there is another method which some people probably use. They stand by the consume unit, put their hand on the earth bar, and chant ohm no. a lot, hoping that the board will talk to them and magically fill yeah. in their certificate. It's, it's, it's in between bingo calling and drive bys, it's where you actually get to touch. The conductive yeah. metal work, and you hope you're chanting. I'm not really joking, obviously. Do you, I mean, do you find you find yourself able to compete and get some um, periodic inspection work? Tomorrow? I mean, you've done some videos. When you've done a video, it looks evident that you're here for the day. You're getting your kit out. You're going to like go up and down and do all the work. But you know, do you find you can get the work regularly? Um, generally, yeah. I mean, EICRs not really. Out of ten EICRs, I probably win two. Realistically. Mm. It's mm. not many because, I mean, I, even if you do like a small EICR for a studio, even like a one bed, it's not worth, I, I just don't see how it's worth doing it for anything less than sort of 200 quid. It's just not worth the... No, it's not. Well, we actually, no, right. in the previous podcast we just had with Chris, he um, talked about the fact that before he even takes on any work, he's already calculated how much he has to earn to cover himself exactly. for day with yeah. all of his costs. Yeah. Have you done that? Have you worked out how much it costs for you a day to run as a business to actually get up and actually go out the front door? And you've got to take, you know, you've got to take income on top of that. Yeah. I you mean, know. I actually not exactly know. I haven't actually come up with that exact figure. Um, but that's actually saying Sarah, the new PA admin. I've got to call her a PA. She fucking hates being called now. <laughs> yeah, um, PA we're dude. Actually, PA. We're trying PA. to come up with that now because we're doing personal all admin. Same contractor stuff. Yeah, personal but... admin. <laughs> Uh, but no, I haven't actually got a figure for that. But I mean, for any ice, I just don't think it's worth doing it for less than 200 quid. The certificate alone, I'm really funny, that takes twice the amount of time it does to do the testing. <laughs> they are they are more <laughs> complex to fill out now. I have to say the inspection schedules have got longer and longer and longer. And I used to, I remember when I was a QS, I used to receive certificates. And I'd look at inspections and you could always find the common mistakes where people were ticking stuff without thinking. Uh, as to you know like double insulation i'd go okay double insulation is in this installation where and they go um i go where 
Where's where's self? Yeah, so in this so they, they can't identify the protective measures. Yes, they couldn't so they, identify. So they would just tick, just... tick, 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 tick. Yeah. And then as a QS, I used to go up to the guys and go, OK, this is a certificate you've done. Mm. Can you tell me where you identified a protective measure? Do we have all this? And 99.9% and of the time, they've just gone through happily tick, tick, tick. So what they do, they do, what they do is was irrelevant. They look, they look at the earthing system because yeah. that's one that can trick them. Because yep. it's a TT, they've got to get that electro tick. Yep. Otherwise, they, they tick everything else. They leave that one unticked, and then they tick everything else. And they tick everything else, and then and then they think about actually, hang on, have I done that right? And often they end up ticking things that aren't there. There's a fine line to do doing it right and just. Drive when I've done when I've done it when I've done it when I do like EICRs, the schedule of inspection sheet is just obviously to align with the regulation chapter 64 so i'm basically going well you know i'll look around i'll observe i'll record the wiring system i'll I'll record i'll take pictures i'll take pictures of the erection methods i'll take pictures of the routing and then when i actually go to look at the inspection i'll know everything from what i've seen i don't have to go around is that because i've seen it holistically Mm. Well, I've always said to guys, you should always take pictures and attach them in within you, in, within your EICRs as well. And I think you can get some software now that allows you to actually take photos. Oh, not, another one will. Another one should, yeah. Yeah, it just shows how rusty I am. I'm, yeah. But um, so yeah, EICRs. Um, I think you'll probably end up doing a year's worth of radio shows, Tom. On the it's easier. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. It's an open and lively debate. I'm sure there'll be loads of people commenting below if this is if they're watching this on YouTube. But um, yeah, it's it's one that's quite argumentative and up for debate. I think it's I don't know. I don't know if is, I can even it, say it without being offensive. But yeah, it's, um, good old Andy Cam. He does a plumbing one, doesn't he? Yeah, well, yeah, that's yeah. That's the he's, bloke who loves so plumbing. Wednesday, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, he's on Wednesdays, I think. So is it local? Is it in London? You have to go into London every afternoon, Lovely. like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I jump on the, I mean, I'm up in Hampstead, so it's pretty quick for me. I just jump on the Jubilee line and 20 minutes and I'm there. So for me, yeah. it's all right. Um, but it's easy enough. I mean, when I started it, I was like full on, um, like practicing it and like scripting what I was going to say and stuff. And I just got to the point, I just, it just doesn't flow. There's just something. Hang on a minute. It. You didn't script it when I sat in here with well, you. No, you just it's, winged it. A, I've just, I've come to the conclusion it's just easier if you just wing it. When you get there, it just flows. You know, I think what we're doing now, we just it just it just flows better, and it's yeah. just easier. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we um, for those listening, we do tend to wing a lot of these unless John Ward is on the call, of which we're under so much pressure. Yeah, we just behave perform. ourselves and wait. <laughs> we behave ourselves and we research thoroughly so that we don't sound stupid around the legend that is Mr. Ward. Oh. Otherwise, he'll um, give us the disapproving frown, and then that's. I'm going to have to do some more CPD before we get Kirsty and John back on. Which well, there, yeah. So when is yeah. that? Uh, soon. We're that very You're soon. You're ruining the sequencing, Dave. Stop yeah. talking about podcasts. Oh, okay? we may yeah. or may not be doing another podcast with someone else. We may not be about the SPDs. We may not be Kirsty. There we go. Did I fix it? <laughs> yes, kind of. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. So, Tom, you um, so you're a radio host. Um, plans for the future with that? Is that long term deal, short term? Got legs. Just trialing it. I don't. Uh, it's definitely been. I've worked out that the, the less I'm allowed to swear on here, aren't I? Yeah. You can say yeah. whatever the fuck you want. I've I've learned that the less fucks you give, the better it works. That's that, honestly what I've learned with radio. Because you yourself, you though, I think you know. I think it works better. The less you give a shit, it just <laughs> flows better. Um, um, so I can uh, confirm, having been in the studio with Tom, and it was the first time we tried Instagram Live, we had zero fucks to give, and we winged it, and it was I've thoroughly enjoyed it, and I'll tell you one thing. It went so quick. It flies past. You think we literally gone. that first second where he's doing mm. his introduction, and you're thinking, "Oh my god, we're now on live radio. This is so cool!" And then it's like the producer's going, "And that's the last bit." And you're like, "We've just done an hour. Wow, yeah. where's an hour gone? Oh mother of god, that's just flown by." But I, I think um, a good, good engagement and good music, it flies by. I mean, my missus now listens to Fix Radio in her car because she loves the music. She's not a tradeswoman. She's a you know occupational therapist, but she likes the music a bit. So there you go. I mean, did, has it? I mean, has it kind of achieved what you wanted it to do? Or I don't um, know what you wanted it to it do, is, but has it? It's. I won't lie. It's a pain in the ass because, like, you've got a. I basically can't. I can't really do anything on a Friday anymore. So you had five days in a week, which has now become four. Mm. So you've got to try and. Uh, I mean, I tend to work up until about midday on the Friday. If I'm going to do anything like work-wise, I've got to do it. 
I can only do small jobs on a Friday now, so I have to get those in like first thing. So, so you're having to sacrifice Fridays now, really? Basically, you, you've you've yeah. got to sort of write off Fridays now. So it's, but it, I mean, it's good. I mean, I don't know what direction it's going in, and I don't know what's going to come of it. But can I make heading, a suggestion? Well, no, unless you try, though, will you? Exactly. That's it. That's kind of it. You just don't you know. really know until you try. You don't know. So that's the point. That's the point with all these things. I did the same with streams. I didn't know what would happen. And then oh, it'll work, awesome. it work quite well. I thought I'd probably do this again then. And that's probably what I'm going to do if we get locked in. Yeah. Might as well just do the, some the bumbling streams. CBD streams. So the live, yeah. da um, Tom, da Dave, if you haven't seen them, Dave does live streams on YouTube. And when he does, it's like you, if you build it, they will come. And um, it's it's quite engaging, actually, I have to say. Um, we had, we I, had like, over 100 people and I was like, oh, shit. But yeah, well, I le we, I've learned from that. One of my bucket list things as a, a in this industry was to do a YouTube video with me sat in one corner and Dave in the other, and we did that yeah. the other month, and that I was so made up. So I'm watching it back, and I'm like, hey, and I'm literally sitting in this chair going, hello, Dave. Well, the next thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to one day do a podcast like this, but we'll do a yeah. live one, so we'll stream it, and then we can actually do, you know, we can actually talk to whoever wants to do it. So instead of having one guy join as a host, we can actually do a live stream of it. We can record it and do it that way. Okay, I didn't know we could do that. There you go. So it just shows that I'm I'm showing my incompetence at all of this, but um, I know how to edit and I know your, how to put onto your, YouTube. Your steps. So Tom, I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna. I've got some questions for you, Dave. Dave, you've got. Or if you've got any, you can jump in. Yeah, um, your social media presence has led to, I think, some good and some bad. Um, some would say you have a fan base now. Um, if that's a thing. Um, what what's can, what's your view on the whole social media stardom thing? Because you're I've I've met you. Me and you have had lots of chats. You're an actually a really grounded, normal person. You don't let fame go to your head, or or not fame notoriety within the small community of of followers that you have. But what what do you think of the people that do follow you? And have you had any weird experiences? Um, yeah, I mean I. I tend, it's, oh, it's a really difficult question to answer. Sorry, mate. No, it's all right. I've, I've learned to just not, when I started it, you, you, you used to get really, really hung up on the amount of subs that you got. Yes. You just get really hung up on it. And mm. I've just got to the point now, I just, I just couldn't give a shit any longer. It just, it is. I like that approach. Because that it's just, kind it of where doesn't. I am. <laughs> All it will do is it just consumes you, and that's the only way. Well, is it um, fair to say that we know people in the industry who are obsessed with followers and watching and all the rest yeah. of it? Very unhealthy, sadly. Oh, I've, I've received messages congratulating me on 100 or 1 million minutes for a video I did. I was going, what? You know, yeah, I get, I get sent information about my... There, that's really? It. That's the one you need, because honestly, yeah. it just... I think I gave up. I Jesus. gave up giving a shit about it at about, I think it was 45,000 subs. I just got to the point. I just, fuck, I don't care. Yeah. It just, it's... See, it, I, I've never looked at sub counts. Um, I've watched other people come and I've watched them grow and I thought, well, maybe I should work harder to kind of maintain growth momentum. But my, cha my channel's not about that for me. But what I did do is I tried to reply to every message. I tried to help every message, every email, everything uh and then i'd end up losing half my day i'd log in in the morning in my office doing work but i'm actually going on social media yeah. and i'm going to the f and i've got a facebook groups which has got like uh, i don't know five six seven, like eight thousand people or some of those groups now uh if, if you add them up uh if you actually go to the messages you've end up lo you've lost half your day yeah um, uh, I, you, can't I can... do, you can't do it you can try to kind of prioritize it a little bit I can confirm that we've had messages on the E5 account where somebody has written a novel about a industrial installation with high blade fluorescence and they're trying to work out inrush currents and there's variable speed draw. And they end up putting this incredibly complex design and verification question, which you have yeah. to sit down for two or three hours. And, and that's the problem that you want, you want to maintain, problem. you want to maintain the integrity of your contribution and your engagement. You want to do the work. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, and I've lost, you know, and I can't, I can't, I, I try my best. I'll see if I, if people like, you know, I hope I can, but um, I found myself taking my eye off the ball with, with answering every message. I just can't do it. Do you get un inundated? I mean, do you get any like weirdos asking for pairs of your pants or anything like that in the post or? Not that as much, but you okay. do get, you get a lot of people um, who, 
you get a lot of you get a lot of people who say thank you. You get I That's get cool. I mean I can go through my inbox now and I can reel off literally thousands yeah. of people who have just and actually it's young people who've entered the industry. They've just sort of emailed okay. you and just said um, hi Tom, love what you're doing. Just to let you know I've signed up to my local college because I want to work for myself like you do. And I get I get a lot of satisfaction from that. I find that really, mm. you know, that's really nice. Well, I know that I've actually made, you know, somebody has actually come into the industry because of that, you. That I, I really get I get a kick out of that. Um, so yeah, when... and this is this is important because I've said this to the colleges and I've said this to a number of people that, you know we have to have responsibility for what we do on social media because a lot of people are coming into the industry looking at social media as a representation of the industry as a guide yeah. uh, as a as a guide um and that's you know that's the great thing about you know your, your cold frosty mornings in the in the in the bp station with your with your bacon roll it's reality yeah. you've got to be out there and, you know in the costs and stuff and that kind of stuff doesn't get shown in the colleges and a lot of guys on apprenticeships right now don't even have jobs yeah, yeah that's heartbreaking yeah. That is heartbreaking at the moment. The amount of youngsters who are struggling to get employment is just mind blowing. And it's probably one of the most common questions I get actually, because you hear me reading them out on fix all the time, where mm. they say, oh, "I'm just coming to the end of my apprenticeship or something, and I've not got For a, a job. job." How yeah. do you? And I don't even know how to answer. I just you just wish it. you had the answer, though, don't you? You wish yeah. you could say, "Oh, go do that," or "Go check this out," or "Go do this." But the industry is not really. I know that there are. I know, like um, JTL have done something to try and help recruit the JTL apprentices, but. There's more apprentices than that. Indeed. So, Dave, do you have any questions that you have for Tom um, that you might want to ask him about social media or his or Um, or the followers and subscribers? Well, first thing I'll actually say to Tom will be thank you very much, because when I first started YouTube, um, it took me a few months to realize you could actually receive personal messages. And I had a message from Mr. Naji that was about three or four months old, which was basically a great stuff keep going and it was basically a bit like you know talking about you know ignore people who troll you and do all that stuff keep going it's a very positive message I remember the message yeah. yeah and he actually sent me a message without going into my personal uh, twitter behavior recently but he actually sent me a message the other day just to kind of you know just move forward be positive and fuck off the idiots um, it's really and... important though because it's like i sit down in the morning here at like because my alarm goes off at six so I yeah wake i remember you saying this before six Mm. And the first thing I do, what's that? You doing? I'm Instagram living. Oh god! Right. It's the thing now that I'm yeah. I, I'm I'm trying to do. So it's carry sorry. on, chap. Sorry. sorry <laughs> no, I was just saying. And like you sit down in the morning at like six o'clock, and the first thing I do is you know you go online, and I have to I have to go onto YouTube. I have to basically delete whatever anything that's like if somebody says you're a fucking prick. I generally tend to leave those and I heart them because that really fucks them off. So oh, I tend yeah. to leave those ones. Um, yeah. But like just the like the really nasty abuse, I have to delete that. But it's like people don't get that. When you're sat there in your pants at like 10 past six in the morning and you've got like a dozen people saying, can you please fuck off and die? If you do it quietly so you don't disturb uh, anyone. I just wouldn't do that, mate. I just, that would be, the that's the van, wrong start to your day, isn't it? That's surely? it. And then you've got to get in your van at 20 past six and just pretend nothing's happened. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> no, I, that's just it's the just, ro- that would do, that would drive me mental. Just having that initial that morning of just yeah, negativity. It's just it's really tough, and that was like, so like when I send messages and stuff to people, it's just keep your chin up because it's just. Uh, and you know it, it, the point is, you know, you don't send messages every day, but you sent a message, and it's important that you know that that actually told me a lot. You know, so thanks for that. And again, recently we tweeted out because it's important to. To know, you know, who to listen to and who to take. It's just, to, it's just, I think from. it is just to say that, you know, there's someone out there yeah. who also understands it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, really, I really appreciate it because I had, I, I mean, we've had, we've had a bit of a kick in from a number of people. Well, a number, a couple of people with regards to us doing this podcast and stuff, and it got to the point where I was getting kicked and kicked and kicked, and I just, yeah. I just like to block it off. Um, I t- trust me, I, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> so and, and, and right now, with obviously this this uh, coronavirus going around and us having to re- you know just reassess what we're doing and where where our work is and all that stuff, we just yeah. need to we need to surround ourselves with positivity, positive people, and people that want to actually help each other. So, have you have you taken any steps for coronavirus? Have you done anything? 
Uh, not a huge amount, to be honest. Not a lot you can do, is there? You just kind of you. you well, I'm do? I'm working you know, from home now. Yeah. Yeah. Lucky sod. I'll say. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm lucky in, in the respects of in a management role, but um, the railways are still running and I've got so much paperwork and admin and documents to do. I yeah. could easily sit here for three months and, and, and just catch up. Mm. Well, I've had uh, training courses cancelled. I mean, because training is, whilst training is essential, it's a non-essential thing right now to have a, have a visitor to site. I had a course that was scheduled for today with a food manufacturer. Uh, and obviously, you know, inviting a food, you know, uh, an extra person unnecessarily into a factory it makes sense to cancel tomorrow i'm supposed to be going to the jib conference that's been cancelled uh, or postponed i should say um it's all it's all happening everything's getting postponed training course getting cancelled um we think yeah it gives me some time to push spike and ninja forward it gives me some time to create some podcasts with the e5 guys which is great um probably going to do something if we do all get locked in i probably will do a couple of streams just to kind of offer some people some sanity of cpd you know if you're for box doing mouse would we'll gain something from the opportunity yeah I, I think validating and verifying your own knowledge uh, by sharing yeah. it is the best way because everybody has different interpretations of what is common sense and what are controls and and various other bits and i i find it yeah it's really good to want to you to just share your knowledge i kind of do it in cruise control mode now um but i'm always thirsty and hungry to learn off of everyone i mean me and tom we we spent uh we've spent a couple of days together now i've been on some of your jobs and yeah. i always get something from it not literally well, that's mcdonald's it, or money but actual. I'd, I'd love to i'd love to get more time out on the sites because i'd see new tools new methods you know because stuff 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 moves on we yeah. said this in a recent podcast you know fe needs to evolve education and training needs to start catching up with the real world and manufacturers to bring in new innovations new products um so we need all of us all of us all of us retired folk from the tools need to go back in what are you what's your thoughts on it because tom one of the biggest things i see is i mean for me if you say to me um please install a a, a, a 2.5 mil armored i'd go right i'm going to use a cw20 gland because i don't use bw glands i always use cw because i find there's just a better art form in doing them um and i just like them they're tighter and better um but now you can get like you don't use banjos anymore and drill your boxes and all the rest of it. you get these like um serrated nuts that you can just bolt a fly lead onto and how do you find keeping up with all these new i mean in your videos you do you one of the things that I, I find fascinating in your videos is you're you're like a kid with a new toy and your brain explores <laughs> this new product you're like you, you're literally sitting there going i really like this because it's like that but i really hate that because why do you do that that's just how am i supposed to work with this and i really like that because you don't realize how much you're actually showing people mm. you're not showing them the work but you're showing them the thought pieces on would I want to spend three hundred pound on a Weera E screwdriver? No thanks. I did never again. Um, yeah, you didn't dig me out they, of that one. I think but, they're, uh, give, they're giving them away now with their their club, aren't what? they? Weera have like a club what? where you sign on for like something like seven. I can't remember what it is. It's, you, you pay an annual membership fee to their club, and that you then receive like heads up on products and opportunities to work with them. And they is this send that you this electric thing. screwdriver? That yes. Yeah, screwdriver. that electric screwdriver that Speed doesn't have much torque something. at the end. The yeah, one that, that doesn't have much torque at all. Um, oh, they and... call it electronic. They, isn't it like electronic torque protection? I think that's just a polite way of saying it's got no part. <clears throat> Bullshit. <laughs> it gets to that point, and then you've actually got to kind of switch it over, haven't you? And you've got to turn it around. But I don't know. You do it. Listen, it's, oh, it's time. the principle of it. I actually bought it because um, I've got, you know, arthritic joints now and again. And I thought it'd be really cool. And, and, and I was using it in my bed. When I was second fixing my bedroom, I thought, great, my 300 pound screwdriver. Oh, life will be marvelous. What a freaking nightmare it was. And I just thought, I'll go back pounds, to my, dude. I will go back to my good old fashioned Irizola. <laughs> 300 pounds now. I mean, that's, isn't that is that not crazy money or is that good money for sparks to pay for a screwdriver now not for for what that is it is at least a hundred I mean, to me that's two expensive. or three sets of irisolas when but i was just just course, remember right? something as well that 300 quid you get very limited amount of attachments as well so really? you're massively limited yeah and it's 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 a it's the, probably the biggest mistake I've made because trouble is I call this the PB effect, Peter Booth, the plumber. I went to um, an Alex and I got in early and he was there. And before Alex opened, I had I had spent £200 on tools. 
because <laughs> I was hanging around with Pete. I was like, oh, that's a new laser level. Oh, I'll have that. I'll have this. Yeah, he, and, needs, um, he needs to come with some kind of like slip of uh, of risk. Yeah, I need to get. And you hang around with him. Out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he does. He does. He will just convince you to buy tools, embarrass you, and humiliate you into buying tools. Um, it's like these Vito Pro packs. They're everywhere now. And I remember, I mean, I've I've got like a Stanley bag and an old and an old CK. You know, remember that CK technician case, that blue upright CK yes. thing. I've got one of those. But I'm looking at these fit approaches and I'm thinking, I've gone to yeah, two days. It's justifiable. I've got a two day job. I'll get one of those bags. I've got a couple of Bosch um, bags and a couple of Stanley bags and uh, yeah. a couple of old British gas blue toolboxes. If anyone remembers them, bad boys. Um, but. Yeah. Yeah, no, for me, I, I just find that the, the, the new product, that's one of the probably reasons why I keep going to Alexis is because the products are constantly updating. I mean, I remember when Wagos came out and I was like a proper grumpy old man going, Phew, Wagos never replaced connectors. Holy cow. I wouldn't use anything but Wagos now. Connector blocks are dead to me. Well, we're now at that point. I mean, I, I was, um, when was I? I was working with the Sparks Apprentice of the Year competition and... There was a girl from Wago. It wasn't Sarah. It was another one. I think his name was Becca or something. And I was asking her, when are Wago going, when are Wago going to come into socket outlets and accessories? And she said, oh, soon. So, oh, really? Yeah. She's, she, you know, they, they know that they know electricians want their connector in as many things as possible. That's in, that's interesting. Oh, hmm, that would be interesting if it came in. Mm. Hopefully they, they very robustly test them. Um, mm. That would be interesting. I think. I think. Yeah, it's the next logical evolution of. Um, it's just, if you think about think about maintenance and things like that, we are. It's amazing that we haven't really got maintenance free socket outlets and accessories more readily available. If you think about it. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. I can't. I can't, I can't, I can't further disagree. And have them in fuse boards. Can't we just have? Can't we just sooner or later? Where do you think about it? It makes yeah. sense, doesn't it? Why Sooner or later, yeah. MCBs and stuff. Why can't we just manufacture away so it's tool free? I don't know. I mean, it's actually not a bad idea, Tom. Yeah, is that yeah. A copyright? Copyright Tom <laughs> Nasty go. Enterprises, there, by the way. Yeah. Um, that's actually not a bad so get rid of all the neutral bars, which let's be honest about it, are just yeah. cheap copper plated crap that you, the minute you screw something up too tight, it just shears off the screw, and you're like. Fuck. The amount of times I've like worked on a neutral out, yeah. bar or an earth bar, and I've had to use every single spare because I've sheared yeah. them off too much from over tightening. But that was before I knew what torque screwdrivers were. Um, yeah, no, the, that's not a bad idea. Having actually banks of Wagos that are rated to take various size terminals, mm. that's not bad. Well, you know what? Maybe we should get a fuse board. Uh, sorry, consume unit. Maybe we should get a consume unit, rip out the neutral bar, or just um, get some no more nails and put some v um, Vargos or Vagos, whatever you want to call them, on on that and just connect them in. <laughs> See how long it takes for them to catch fire. No, well, it won't matter if they catch fire They're in a metal enclosure anyway. Um, <laughs> that's not a bad idea, Tom. So yeah. this challenge to manufacturers, Bachelor. please can you create a consume unit with um, um, maintenance-free connections, way goes, please, and Tom will install it on one of his jobs and um, be a brave man to certify. No, it'll be interesting to see it go and put for its paces. That's a really yeah. good idea. That is a really oh. good idea. So as we just pushed on to Tom making content, so, I mean, are you kind of, are you still going like, you know, full steam ahead with YouTube? Do you have a plan to kind of, you know. Full steam ahead. Um, I've I've become more and more relaxed the further and further I delve into this. And I've sort of got to the point. I'm just like, I mean, I used to religiously upload every Monday, and it's just got to the point. I'm just like, uh, YouTube literally it just takes over your life, and it's you know it's driven. I mean, we're we're pretty good now, but I mean, YouTube has driven a wedge the size of a bus between my girlfriend, my family. It just, it's you can't it, allow that. You can't, you can't do it. It just um, honestly, absolutely it's not your life. Um, yeah. So I've just sort of got to the point. I just upload whenever I feel like it. I've got a video here mm -hmm. now, which is almost finished, and I might finish it by the end of the week. But I, I really not. But that's, that's just the right perfect thing. attitude, though, isn't it? That though? is the perfect attitude to have, mate. Yeah. To finish with you. Um, I'm uh, I'm hoping at some point me and Tom can start a, a small YouTube series called uh, <laughs> "The Fat Sweaty Spark Meets the um, Slim <laughs> um, Fit Trim um, uh, More More Robust Electrician." Mm. Uh, that that would be quite interesting, actually, to um, to do that one. But 
I mean, I, I, as I say, I, I took a bit of a quiet time last year. I, my last video, actually, I'll just check now because I don't actually know. Um, four months ago. Yeah. You know, subscriber count is going up slowly but it's going up which is i guess so, the right direction do i feel like making a youtube channel i must 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 um no i've made loads of podcasts i'm thinking about doing a spark and ninja podcast just to kind of help with the podcast content um but no i'll make a video when i have the right material to make a video that i would make yeah. that you know and there's there's stuff i could make I, I could right now tomorrow make a couple of videos with stuff i've recorded on the phone on the tools and all that stuff um but I don't know. I, I feel right now, for example, if I feel right now, having taken four months of a break, if I make a video, I'm now going to have to go, oh, I'm back in video making mode. Yeah. Does that make sense? So I'm going to then put yeah. pressure on myself because I want to make another one and another one. And I don't so, like that. So it needs to really be when it suits it's, me. It's worthwhile putting into context for those who are listening or watching this. So this here, let's say this, we, we take this to, and this is an hour long piece of video. Now to when we're done here, I, to, I'll have to download this file. I will then have to. Oh, Tom's attacking his screen. That's right. Front door. Um, Front okay. Door. I will have to download the video. Um, I will have to convert it to an MP3. That takes about 10 minutes. Probably yeah. takes another five minutes to upload it and render it. But when I then want to upload this video to YouTube, my rendering right. software will take probably 50 minutes to render it into an MP4 and then another 45 minutes to upload it to YouTube. Mm. So it takes more time to put this video on YouTube than it actually mm. takes for yeah. us to talk. And to be fair, so, all you really do is cut each end I and cut then you create the a thumbnail. Thumb. Yep. You put pictures on the thumbnail. That's it. Now, yep. when you've got, you know, when you've got obviously everything else going in and you've got effects and all that, I mean, I mean Tom went quite you know, head first into that. Well, thing. Tom does it takes it a lot of time. Quick, um, what is it? To, uh, 20 minutes later and all that weird <laughs> stuff that I really like. That's quite cool. <laughs> that is quite cool. It's mine. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, he's got food. Oh, he's got his good lady has brought him grub. You come back. Uh, excellent. That's always good when the ladies come back. Come back um, with food. Right. Well, um, do you have any more questions for him, um, David? Because we could talk about fans and various stories. Um, I, I would like to know. Oh, how do I word this? Um, because your business your business is you're trying to grow you're focusing a bit more of your energy on trying to grow your business take on larger jobs as anyone who follows him on instagram or, or social media will, will know that what are the challenges you see for yourself over the next five years for you as a because uh, you're a business owner and a self-employed electrician what are the challenges you see well the biggest challenge i'm facing at the moment is I'm trying to be ISO registered. I just registered today with Safe Contractor. Awesome. Yes. And I did mean awesome about yes. Safe Contractor, by the way. Yeah. It's just it's, jobs for the boys. It's just it's you admin. look at the paperwork. It's I, 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 I mean, I understand why these things are needed, but I registered for Safe Contractor to do a project for a company. I wrote an electrically biased risk assessment method statement. I wrote a system of work. I sent it to the girl. She couldn't read it. She can couldn't I just, understand it. I asked, she asked me to fix it. I was like, well, get it to someone who can read it. And she sent me a document, told me to go to Appendix 4, and told me to copy and paste the content of that. Wow. And I'm like, oh, that was valuable. Wow. You so I, I always have a saying, by the way, on all registrations, not that I'm a cynic, but I used to be an auditor for a year of my life. I was actually lead auditor for London Underground. And as part of that, I had to train as an internal and lead auditor. So I learned ISOs like, yeah. like a religion. And I realized with ISO 9001 that my mum could get ISO registered. And I barely know her. It's that it's not that hard. You've just got to have the systems process. I could literally sit and write six procedures, keep loads of records, management reviews, commit to quality, job done. It, it it's a the, the badges of ISO. When people say, "Oh, our management system is ISO 9001," really, really? So you have a complaints procedure. So you have management reviews. Shouldn't you do that anyway? This is basically yeah. what it is. It's just yeah. jobs for the boys. It's... Yeah, it is. It's written by committees to. Um, just create more badges and it's it's almost a commercial 
enterprise in itself, the ISOs of the world. It's because I mean, you can get, and I've I've done this in presentations before. You ISO nine thousand and one quality, fourteen thousand and one environmental, eighteen thousand and one occupational health, fifty thousand, which is I believe energy, fifty five thousand asset management, thirty one thousand risk. There is an ISO for fucking everything now. It's yeah. ridiculous. Um, there's one for collaborative working. I mean, I, who the fuck writes a standard on collaborative working? How to get on with people? Go and get an ISO badge for that. Seriously? Imagine how that... many ISOs are going to be developed after this virus, though. Uh, no, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> yeah, Let's it will be. be. Let's be clear here. There is bloody loads of ISO standards out there, and I genuinely think most of them are not worth a piss. I'll probably no. get sacked for saying that, but I genuinely think as a... Quali a member of the, a member of the Chartered Quality Institute, yeah. I think they are dog shit. They are badly manipulated and bad. Again, fundamentally though, that opinion is because you've looked at these and you've seen what they achieve, and you you know oh, that's the point. Jack. You know, the I've been asked to create good. them, and the point you know I've been asked to create them, and the point is they are that as as Tom says, the jobs of the boys. You put too much effort into them, they don't work because people can't read them. I think I think the intent of them was good. Just to be clear, even though I'm ranting about it, I think the intent of what they try and achieve is good. I think they're very easily manipulated by clever people, and mm. then they become worthless, and that's the problem. Because oh, if, if a managing director of a company wants to commit to quality, he will commit to yeah. quality with his behaviours and his approach to his clients. Think about think about right. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw the NIC into this discussion uh, because it's the example. Okay. When I started, when I started getting into the industry, working with the old man and the family firm, we were in ICIC registered because we wanted to be, because mm. we recognised that using that would be a mark to actually illustrate our higher level and our, you know, the intention of that mark back then was that. Obviously, as it became more of an, a more of a subscription service with introduction to Part B, people now go to obtain that badge because they're told to get it. That's the yeah. difference. Contrast now, ISO yeah, nine thousand and one. I can go and get that if I feel there's value in that. But if I'm told to get that, I'll just jump through the hoops and get that. You know, the training yeah. I'm looking at developing now, I've got to consider City and Guild registration because people insist on it. But to me, when I look at the actual external quality assurance, internal quality assurance, it's all broken now. So I think, Dave, we've just kind of shot ourselves in the foot because we could probably do a, <laughs> a podcast on ISO standards. We probably will. We often do this. Um, Great, we, brother, yeah, brother. this is how it works, Tom, by the way. We tend to just talk and then we kind of have a light bulb moment and go... It's the problem with winging it. This shit writes itself. It writes itself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it yeah. does. And I'm sure that if there are people listening on sites or in their vans and their radios, they could probably go, you've missed this. Please tweet us or something and tell us what you want us to do. We'll just stick it in the queue because uh, there is a queue. Even though we wing it, there's still a queue of people and subject matter to talk about. Um Mr. Naji, I know it's it's getting on, and I'm going to so. kind of end this with um, my favourite thing that I've just recently discovered: three wishes. Um, if you were to have three wishes um, for yourself or in the electrical industry, um, what would they be? For my uh, for the electrical industry, well, I think. And I you can't really... use one to fix everything, by the way. No, I would really like to see like a a driver's license style license for contractors. I'd really mm. like to see that. That's my license, Paul. I'm gonna have I was to, just I'm gonna about have to, to say, to release it. you're going to have to release the Spark Energy <laughs> licensing system. Love that first wish, Tom. Good man. I think that, but I think like that would really, I think that would funnel yep. a lot of the crap out of the industry. I really think something like that would be really good. Couldn't agree. Um, Your wish is granted. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> But like seriously, you could have like like on the driver's license, you can have points. You have a points-based system. So like if you've made a little fuck up, you yep. get three points. And if it's a major one, you lose your license or something. You know, just something uh, where there's like a because then with that you'll get accountability. Which just yeah. on I think, that, I Tom. think another podcast where Tom's going to have to be describing what a good license would work like. Because so Tom, you've just shot yourself in the foot. That. So there'll be another podcast with Tom talking about this. But <laughs> just on a quick one, do you remember, Dave? We were talking about smart boards. Now you know That's I've good. got smart boards where they they kind of email me and tell me when there's a fault or a potential fault. Can you imagine if a smart board emailed you and said, "This last bloke who worked to me is a right twat"? 
<laughs> that would be so <laughs> funny. He didn't even screw my cover back on. his loose contact. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I mean, funny. just just to kind of add to this, Tom. I mean, I've mentioned it in a few podcasts and other places. Uh, I mean, I've got an idea of a concept license to practice, which would do that in that you know we'd have individual recognition of competence levels for each different area of work like on the back of a driving license where you have each individual skill and they'd have to achieve cpd for each individual skill and like you say with point system if you're shit they would be sanctioned from those skills <laughs> on a live database with a unique number yeah and that's attached imagine if guys doing easy icrs today had to put their number on every single one of them yeah, Do you know what I'd actually load is, that on a system. Dave, there's technically nothing stopping you from doing that. Well, I've been waiting to hear what the IT are going to say with their registration. Oh, yeah, mark, that's J-I-B. Um, yeah, and if yeah. no one gets it right, it's going to go on the fucking internet and I'll let everyone else discuss for themselves. Yeah, but, um, yeah Tom, so, Tom's got the right idea. We need a licensed system like that. Agree. Well, which one? We hope it's which one? <laughs> which two? What is it, Mr. Nargi? Elect- well, the electrical industry, I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know. It can be a personal of... one if you want uh, it to be. It's not more wishes either. Can't, can't do that. I don't know. But personal ones, um, I, I'm putting a lot of effort into work and YouTube is quite personal for sort of YouTube and work because I want to give my partner the absolute best life she can have. Perfect. Yeah. I totally 100% support and agree. Yeah. Man after my own heart. The ladies deserve it with the crap they put up from us. Absolutely. Yeah, trust me, she, she's put up with a truckload of shit. Yeah, yeah. So she deserves, I think it's only fair that she deserves the best I can I can offer. So, yeah. That's honourable. It's good. It means, you, it means you're a good man as far as I'm concerned. I've done two out of three. That's, that's yeah. So third one then, because I'll be honest with you, your first one was world class and would actually go a hell of a long way to solving a lot of problems in industry. Your second one is what I think every decent human being should want for their family and their loved ones. Do you have a third? I don't think I do, actually. Do you know what? I, I, I actually think... My head. I actually think we've screwed this up with the free wishes because, um, you, OK, you can just say peace in the world then or no coronavirus in the world would probably be yeah. handy at the moment. Mm. I do hope that disappears soon and people can get their lives back on track. I really yeah, hope, I hope it doesn't so. become the monster that it appears to be becoming. Are you, are you finding any um, communications with clients about workflow or anything, or is everything kind of going as uh, No, I've, as had planned? Two, I've had two cancellations today. They were my first. Yeah. So I'm sure that would be the, the... The beginning of a couple of, more. Yeah. Yeah, it was snowball. It was, I'm, I'm trying to keep people working as best I can um at the moment and it's 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 challenging because of government advice changing daily oh i did um, um i applied for my universal tax credits because i'm self-employed mm-hmm. um family wife four kids 40 pound a week i'm entitled to you're joking no nope. and i'm just waiting for approval bless them well <laughs> you know the cow so there's 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 definitely things to learn from this from well, well I, do you know what I genuinely think that this coronavirus if it doesn't teach society that the capitalism model I'm probably going to get slated for this in a, it doesn't work it's a yeah. it's a mm-hmm. short term because if you took coronavirus the term and replaced it with the word Martian you'd have that same sort of uneerie feeling in society people panic buying and all the rest of it mm. they, this we've just shown ourselves to be shallow in the way we panic buy unorganized <clears throat> in, in in infrastructure management and also the government are totally i mean i was listening to them today they're to- they're at least three weeks behind where people are they're not telling people don't go out and panic buy they're recommending people don't go to pubs and clubs and the reason they're recommending it is because if they order them to shut they've got a massive insurance claim on their hands it's absolutely insane um how divorced from reality the government are although i do think we've got the best of the bad bunch which is terrible yeah i think there's say. a lot of, i think there's a lot of hoping going on yeah which is disturbing really i just hope people's families can be safe and looked after i think that's the only thing we can hope for really and hope people try and look out for each other yeah yeah that's what we say at the end of these have have Um, we we've uploaded the first podcast we've done on this haven't we the coronavirus the coronavirus one was released um literally the night after we did it 
Right, we'll probably have to do an update probably in, in a few days or a week with the guys and just see where the state of industry is with it. Well, I, the, the, the trouble is, is when we talk about current subject matter. I, yeah. So we've got a load of podcasts that are sat ready then to go. Put it in the queue. Put it to the top. When we yes. talk about stuff that's urgent, just bring it up. Yeah, I've just realised that now, actually, that this will probably have to go out Sunday or something then, so it's yeah. still relevant. Of course, it's yeah, relevant. doesn't mean, doesn't yeah. mean, it doesn't, you know, you just push things down a little bit. I can yeah, go yeah, no, no, we've, we've got six or seven of them parked yeah. at the moment, so that's fine. Right, okay, Um, Tom, thank you. Thank you very much for this. It. I've enjoyed it. Yes, Tom, thank you for your time, mate. It's been awesome as always. Um, um, at some point, we'll get you back to talk more. Um, once you've been mm. through um, your ISO audits and everything else, you can have a good old rant on what you thought about them and put the world <laughs> yeah. to rights again. Um, David, as always, thank you very much. Um, Cheers, does anybody have anything last they want to add before we close this? Um, I think my partner's in the room just there, and I think she's going to stick chopsticks in my eyes if i don't go so. right then we will thank you very much for your time we'll go then Tom, david and until the next one take care of yourself and each other yes. bye bye mate